So this quick tutorial is about diffusion and effusion for Honors Chem. Uh, this PowerPoint is going to be available online, so I'm not going to spend time going through every line of the PowerPoint. So diffusion, as we talked about before, the random mixing gases from high concentration to low concentration, very similar to perfume or air sanitizer. Uh, effusion, though, and I want you to remember, it's through a tiny hole. That's the difference between diffusion and effusion. Uh, and both of them depend upon molar mass. You can see here the diffusion where it's high concentration of one type of gas molecule. Uh, and there's nothing on the other side, so that's why it diffuses across. And whereas effusion, again, it's going through the small pinhole. The strict definition has it going into a vacuum. We're just going to say effusing going from a high concentration to low concentration through the small hole. Uh, it, and the example is think of a nail in, the, in your car tire. So we use Graham's law to calculate the rate of effusion. We can rate of effusion or defusion. And the rate of one gas over another is inversely proportional to the square root of their molar masses. Okay, inversely proportional means that you have to flip them over. Obviously, so the rate of A on top of one side, then the square root of the molar mass of A has to be on the bottom of the other. So uh, we can do some calculations. Um, not only can we do rate, we can also do distance. So the distance traveled by one gas over the distance traveled by another is equal to the to the in uh, the is inversely proportional to the square root of their molar masses again. All right. So if we're looking at something like helium and nitrogen, we calculated that the, the rate of helium would be on top and the nitrogen, the rate of the nitrogen would be on bottom, whereas you'd flip them over and the molar mass, the square root of the molar mass of the nitrogen would be on top and the square root of the helium would be on bottom. And that we can prove that through calculations. Let's try some other numbers. Actually, here we've got methane and propane. And... Uh, you find the molar masses of each gas. You just, of course, add up the three carbons and the eight hydrogens for the propane and the one carbon and the four hydrogens for the methane. And you can plug them in. We want to know how much faster is the methane than the protein, propane. And the methane's on top because we know it'd be faster. It's going to be a lighter gas. Now we can calculate how much because on the other side, we have the square root of the molar mass of the propane over the square root of the methane. So when we do this, the rate is over one. Okay, that means it's 1.65 times faster. Or you could say that the C3H8 is 1.65 times slower. Um, so that's how you would do that calculation. Another way we could do that is, in this case, you had to find the, the, the rate. Let's say you were given the rates you had to find a molar mass. Well, if you knew what gas you're dealing with, so we know that we're dealing with at least helium, and the question says, oh, it's faster than helium. If it's faster than helium, then it has to go on top. Faster than helium, that means that it's squared of its molar mass. It's going to be on bottom. It's going to be a lighter gas. And you plug these in. Remember, this is over 1, even though you don't see it. So um, then we have 1.41 times the square root of the molar mass of x equals 2, S square root of x equals 2 over 1.41. You can, of course, then square it, and you end up with 2.01 grams per mole, which leaves us with hydrogen H2 gas. Okay, so if you're asked to find the identity of that. Big points to remember that all gases at the same temperature have the same average kinetic energy. Even though they have the same average kinetic energy, that's, ma that's uh, mass times velocity. They could have um, different velocities because they could have different masses. There we go. So, and that's what Graham's Law is all about, is finding those differences in molar masses. Because it's only dependent, I mean, it's, it's, you must be at the same temperature in order to do it. The heavier the gas, the slower it moves. The lighter, the faster. All right, that's all. Please let us know if you have any questions.